Do you always need a GPU to run your generative AI system? The answer may surprise you. Yeah! Welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider, where we bring you the insider scoop on cloud computing and the use of generative AI. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, I'm author, speaker, b Geek, and here to talk to you today about whether or not we should use a GPU with our generative AI system or not. So for this topic came from you guys. I put out a flash survey on LinkedIn and uh, talked about different topics that we may want to cover in the video. And this one came up as the uh, top topic that people wanted to uh, wanted to cover. And I'm, and I'm happy and fine with it because I think this is a question that I'm getting a lot right now. People are looking for a architect's take on this technology and how to use this technology most effectively. So you got to remember last year, since kind of generative AI became a thing, we've had a shortage of GPUs or graphics processor units, which people view as being needed to run generative AI systems, either in the cloud or on premise. So this caused a bit of a panic. A lot of startups were delaying things because they couldn't get the GPUs uh, that they thought they needed for their particular systems. A lot of enterprises that were looking to jump into generative AI were concerned about the supply of GPUs. And I was getting a lot of questions about that. The press was talking to me about it. And so it got to be a issue with me as to what the reality is in terms of the importance of this technology to be leveraged by generative AI systems, and do you really need it in each and every case? So first, what are GPUs? Graphics processor units, and they've been around for a long time, and they were created to provide uh, vector graphic rendering, normally in 3D models, things like that. So I remember back in the day when I was younger and I used to build my own computers, we used to buy graphics cards with GP, GPUs on them because we could offload the graphics processors to this card and therefore the computer was able to perform better, certainly if you're doing lots of graphics such as gaming, things like that. And it became kind of a standard technology that we're putting in console gaming systems and used in our computers uh, as really kind of the ability to provide us with better performance and the ability to run things in a faster way. So along comes AI, specifically generative AI, machine learning, deep learning. And we knew that the ability for a graphics processor unit to do things in parallel, in other words, process a lot of things at the same time, provided a benefit for people who were running machine learning systems, AI systems, and certainly generative AI. And the best way to describe it, imagine if you have 100 people in a room and we pull the fire alarm and we open one door and one person goes out at a time, it's going to take them longer to vacate the room than if we were able to open 10 doors at the same time. So the relationship between GPUs and CPUs is much the same. GPUs do things in a serial order, typically sequential orders, where GPUs are able to do things at the same time. They are able to process lots of things at the same time. So obviously that provides a core capability and a performance advantage for very complex processing, such as needed by generative AI systems. So that's why People normally, if they're going to be leveraging generative AI, they're also looking to leverage GPUs as processors that are needed to provide the performance that they view that they need for their generative AI systems. So you got to remember that um, GPUs and CPUs have different purposes. CPUs are generalized and they handle processing functions of a computer, where the GPUs are specialized and they're dedicated to video processing or dedicated to generative AI processing. And normally they work on the same systems with CPUs. Now I know keyboard warriors are gonna to talk to me about uh, how there's different brands of CPUs and types of CPUs that may have capabilities that look a lot like GPUs, um, but that doesn't matter. We're talking about generalities here. The ability to look at this stuff in terms of what we can buy in the marketplace and leverage to build, our, build and deploy our systems. So GPUs have a performance value, but there's some downsides to them as well. Uh, they take more power and uh, they also cost more. And as you can see in the shortage, uh, their market price, so the price goes up 
when demand goes up. And so as we're building these generative AI systems and we view GPUs as being needed, then the price is naturally going to go up. Also supply of them. In some instances, they couldn't get GPUs, certainly during the pandemic for consoles and things like that. So if you're dependent and your systems are coupled to GPUs, you may find that it's a bit of a challenge to get the resources you need uh, to get your systems done in time. So do you always need GPUs when building generative AI systems? And the answer is it depends. You gotta remember since GPUs are more expensive, if we're deploying generative AI in systems that are gonna take many different processors like edge computing, then GPUs can be cost prohibitive. So we can still run generative AI systems using traditional CPUs. They're just gonna run slower. So people who are doing something like building an edge computing system for you know, oil rigs, for example, where there's a thousand of them that are sitting at a particular oil rig to carry out oil rig maintenance processing, that's actually a thing, and are looking to use generative AI systems to do the maintenance processing, it's obviously going to be cost prohibitive for them to put a GPU in all of these units that sit at every oil rig all over the world. And so that means that in some instances, we can downgrade to CPUs and use that technology instead. And it's perfectly fine. They're going to run slower. But normally, these things are doing very specific transactional tasks. So we're not going to need to have the performance of a GPU for that particular instance. Also, it's going to cost too much. It's going to take too much power. And there's lots of downsides to leveraging a GPU in some instances. And so we're going to rather depend on CPUs to do it. And that's perfectly fine as well. Also, I think that a lot of the generative AI systems that businesses are going to build out there are going to be smaller tactical oriented systems. So they're, they're not building chat GT, GPT. So the, uh, the, they're not trying to build knowledge models that are using the sum of the internet and the ability to do inferences through those knowledge models to, uh, to get answers. It's going to be around sales transactions. It's going to be around recommendation engines that are bound to a commerce website, for example. So they're going to be very specific things that the generative AI systems are tasked with doing. And certainly, you know, using small language models instead of large language models in many instances where they probably don't need a GPU. And you can certainly run them on CPU-based systems only. And I think they'll run at a perfectly fine performance level acceptable for that particular purpose. Now, when you get up into the larger, uh, utiliz larger generative AI systems, they are going to need the specialized processing because they need the performance to provide um, the pragmatic performance that's needed to get the information out of the systems at the time that it's needed to come out of the systems. But I think the fact that I'm hearing this a lot from people that all the generative AI systems are going to need a GPU is probably not correct. Some of them will because they do need the additional horsepower but many of them won't. And certainly a lot of the initial generative AI systems that are being deployed, that I'm seeing deployed right now, are very tactically oriented. They're, they're not handling a lot of information. They're not handling a lot of training data relative to some of the bigger LLMs that are running out there, where CPUs are absolutely going to be fine. So how do we approach this? Number one, understand what you're doing first. So in other words, look at the requirements of the generative AI system that you're building. Look at the amount of training data that has to come into it. Look, look at the processing that's going to happen and have a realistic understanding of how much, how many resources and the types of resources that you need to leverage to support that generative AI system. So in some instances, you're going to need the processing power of a GPU uh, to be located with your CPUs. In other instances, CPUs only are going to be just, just fine. And um, that goes with on-premise systems and we're building our systems on-premise or leveraging GPUs and CPUs from a cloud provider. Um, they're going to cost more. They're going to charge you more for using those processors. So we want to use them when it's appropriate to use them. So it's the it depends answer again. Figure out what you're doing first before you figure out the processors that you need to drive the resources to drive your system. Also, we should understand that 
in many instances, when we're leveraging GPUs, we have to develop software that's able to leverage them correctly, specifically and efficiency, efficiently. So there's SDKs out there, software development kits that the GPU providers are providing that allow you to write software, which is able to take advantage directly of the GPU processing power. So while there is some benefits in running GPUs with CPUs, in lots of cases, we're going to have to alter our software to take advantage of GPUs. Now, I understand that lots of uh, 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 complexities come into this, and but we're, so we're talking in generalities, but you have to develop your application for the native processors that are in the system, and that's your way to get the most performance out of. So this is yet another cost versus performance trade-offs. In other words, when we want the performance, in this case, the performance of leveraging a GPU with our AI system, then we're going to have to pay for it. It costs more, it burns more power, um, more resources, it's more complex to build, uh, more complexity comes into how we build and deploy the software. As I mentioned, you know, building it specifically to leverage a GPU. So we have to make a decision as to whether or not this is a valid requirement for us moving forward. In many instances, this is going to be millions of dollars. I talked about the edge computing system where you have oil rigs that are uh, running edge computing systems at every rig out there. And if we're going to leverage GPUs in each of those edge computers, it's going to be expensive to buy all those systems. And it's going to be expensive to run those systems because it takes more power. Also, it's going to be more complex in terms of maintaining the thing. So there's a trade-off there. So I get concerned, though, every time I hear people talk about generative AI systems, they always think that GPUs are going to be a core requirement. In other words, it's almost like it's mandated to run generative AI. It's not. It's a good idea in many instances, but it's not always a good idea. Depending on the amount of cost that you're paying for the GPU system versus the benefit that you're able to get from running GPUs for your generative AI deployment. And that counts whether it's on premise or in the cloud. Also keep in mind that this area is going to be developing rather quickly. There's chips that are, that are being designed right now that are going to uh, provide the capabilities of GPUs that are specifically purpose-built for generative AI. We're gonna start seeing those released in the next year or so. so There'll be those other architectural options to run your generative AI systems on chips that are designed specifically for AI. You have to remember, in this case, GPUs were designed for a different purpose, but we found that they have value in running AI systems because of their ability to process things in parallel. They're able to do many things at, at the same time. But other chips are being developed as well including hybrid CPU chips that are able to provide the, the, the characteristics of GPUs, also, uh, along with the CPU architecture, low-powered versions of them. So this is going to be changing rather quickly, rather fast. So keep that in mind, that we always have to keep our ear to the ground in terms of where the market's going and make sure we're making the correct choices based on what the market is currently and what the best bang for the buck is in terms of which resources we're able to buy and deploy within our systems. In this case, they're generative AI systems. Also do your research. I have a few articles that I use to research this video. They're linked, uh, in, they're linked below and check those out. Uh, differences between the two, look at the way, the where in the market is now and make good decisions in terms of where we're going to spend the money that's going to provide the most value to the business. You got to remember, as architects, that's our purpose. Well, that's all I have for you today. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to uh, check out my LinkedIn learning videos. Also, check out, check out my LinkedIn profile. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on LinkedIn. And read my book. And enjoy your time learning more about cloud computing and generative AI. I'll see you next time.